Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Although theropod dinosaurs are understandably often thought of as being predators, given that many forms were carnivores, the group did experiment with both omnivorous and fully herbivorous niches on numerous occasions. The derived Maniraptoriform salurosaurs seem to have been particularly diverse in terms of diet, producing the omnivorous ornithomimosaurs and oviraptorosaurs, the carnivorous dromaeosaurs, as well as the staggering variety of dietary habits found in modern birds. However, one group of many raptoriforms took their herbivorous adaptations to an extreme degree, with these of course being the bizarre sloth-goose hybrids known as the therizinosaurs. With a fossil history that spanned almost the entirety of the Cretaceous, these scythe lizards are most famous for their at times very large and weird representatives from the end of the period, probably developing from omnivorous ancestors. Therizinosaurs gradually developed a series of very striking anatomical features, unseen in any other theropod group. While early forms lacked beaks, were relatively lightly built and had quite typical theropod feet, wherein only three toes made contact with the ground, derived later species possessed notably more robust builds. In addition to more upright postures, large bellies for digesting vegetation, jaws specialised for stripping plant matter, wide heavily constructed pelvises, and greatly enlarged curved claws on the hands. Trackways, as well as fossil finds, have shown that these later animals were possibly plantigrade, with all four toes making contact with the ground in order to support their greater weight and unusual postures. Many of these adaptations were similar to those of the mammalian ground sloths and calicotheres with therizinosaurs inhabiting similar niches as slow-moving browsers equipped with formidable sharp claws. While the vast majority of species were native to East Asia, in particular China and Mongolia, therizinosaur remains have also been found in North America, with evidence preserved in the form of fossil trackways hinting that they may have been present in Europe and Africa as well. The oldest and most basal member of therizinosauria was the genus Volcarius, from the Beriasian stage of early Cretaceous Utah, native to the yellow cat member of the Cedar Mountain formation between 139 and 134 million years ago. This very noodly looking animal is known from several specimens of varying ages, from juveniles to fully grown adults. Mature individuals measured about 4 meters or 13 feet long and possessed highly elongated necks and tails, comparatively short hind limbs, powerfully built forelimbs and small skulls. The teeth on the maxilla were leaf-shaped and finely serrated, suggesting a diet composed largely of plants, while the five teeth closest to the tip of the lower jaw were longer and more pointed, perhaps indicating that Falcarius may still have been somewhat omnivorous. Unlike more derived therizinosaurs, this genus lacked a beak at the tips of its jaws and was notably more lightly built, being a faster runner than its later relatives. The pelvis remained in the propubic position typical for non-avian theropods, wherein the pubic bones pointed forwards. Despite its slender build, Fulcarius was still pretty large for a salurosaur from the very early Cretaceous period, with adults weighing up to 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. This would be a sign of things to come for the group as a whole. Other basal therizinosaurs were significantly smaller than this, such as Lingyuanosaurus from the famous early Cretaceous J-hole biota of Liaoning Province, China. Measuring about 2.2 meters or 7.2 feet long and weighing up to 12 kilograms or 26 pounds, this little animal nonetheless was something of a transitional form, being more derived than Falcarius and possessing some traits in common with later therizinosaurs including a strongly upturned crest on the ilium and a more robust femur, suggesting that this genus was not a particularly fast runner. It seems to have been a close relative of the better known and slightly younger Jian Chanosaurus from the Yichian formation. This was another small form that measured roughly two meters long. The skull was relatively elongated and narrow, terminating in a small beak at the tips of the jaws. The teeth were small and leaf-shaped, being well adapted for shredding vegetation while its postcranial skeleton was lightly built. The pubis remained forward pointing, and the animal's tibia was about half as long again as its femur, which indicates a cursorial lifestyle. Meanwhile, the mysterious Japanese Maniraptoran genus Fukui Venator may have been a basal therizinosaur as well, although its taxonomic position is still uncertain. All more derived members of this group were part of the clade Therizinosauroidea, an early and well-known example was a genus Baypiosaurus, 
also from the early Cretaceous Yijian formation of Liaoning. This animal is represented by three relatively complete specimens, which reveal a smallish herbivore about 2.2 meters long and weighing 27 kilograms or 60 pounds. The skull was comparatively large by Therizinosaur standards, with the jaws being slender and narrow, while the neck was also quite short. This indicates that Bapiosaurus was not a high browser, but instead fed on vegetation that was closer to ground level. Preserved feather impressions have shown that this animal would have possessed a shaggy coat of insulating down-like plumage that was probably dark brown in colour. This would have come in handy during the relatively cold and possibly snowy winters experienced by the animals of the Yichian formation, which also included the shaggy-coated Tyrannosauroid U. Tyrannus, which may have been a significant predator of Bapiosaurus. Other Therizinosauroids were much larger animals that were starting to more closely resemble the more famous later forms, such as the Mongolian genus Alchosaurus. Endemic to the Bayan Gobi formation between 113 and 100 million years ago, this genus measured about 4 metres or 13 feet long, and stood roughly 6 feet 6 inches tall. It was significantly more heavily built than its earlier relatives, possessing a long neck, short tail and comparatively large claws. The stomach would have been enlarged, while the feet were probably quite broad to support the animal's greater weight, which has been estimated to have been about 400 kilograms or 880 pounds. The manual claws were hooked and fairly well developed, likely being used for a mixture of display, defence and pulling vegetation closer to the animal's mouth. An even more massive early Cretaceous form was Suzhousaurus from China. At 6 metres or 20 feet long, and with a mass of over a metric ton, it's described as noted similarities to the giant ground sloth Megatherium, giving this animal the species name Megatheroides. Like later Therizinosaurs, it possessed a highly robust skeleton with a short tail and stocky hind limbs. The pubic bones were swept backwards in order to accommodate the animal's large gut. However, the structure of the humerus was notably more basal than in the derived Therizinosaurids, while the vertebral column was also not highly pneumatized indicating a placement close to but outside of this family. Therizinosaurids proper first appeared in the fossil record during the mid-Cretaceous, and were in some cases much larger than their earlier relatives. All possessed elongated necks, comparatively small skulls, beaked jaws, and broad feet in which all four digits touched the ground. As such, they would have been slow-moving animals with deliberate, plodding gaits. Some species developed massive manual claws that were probably utilised more for display than anything else. Their jaws were somewhat downturned, which helped to mitigate stresses while feeding. Analysis of preserved skull material has shown that Therizinosaurids had relatively large brains by non-avian dinosaur standards, with their inner ears having a structure similar to that of modern birds. This suggests that these animals had a good sense of hearing and balance, while their olfactory bulbs were also expanded indicating that Therizinosaurids had a good sense of smell. In addition, they possessed binocular vision, enabling a degree of depth perception. Taken together, this suggests that Therizinosaurids inherited such features from their much smaller and more carnivorous ancestors. In combination with communal nesting sites associated with the group, at least some of these bizarre herbivores seem to have been quite social animals. Their eggs were buried in sediment, and covered with vegetation in a way similar to modern crocodilians and megapodes, with their hatchlings being highly precocial, able to walk and feed themselves shortly after emerging from their eggs. Basal Therizinosaurids included forms such as the Mongolian Erlianosaurus and its close relative named Mongolosaurus, both of which were quite modest in size, at between 3 and 4 metres in length. Erlikosaurus from Senamanian Mongolia was even smaller, being roughly 3.5 metres or 11 feet long, and weighing up to 250 kilograms or 550 pounds, about as tall as an adult human, and possessing a relatively slender build and narrow snout. This selective browser would have somewhat resembled a giant turkey. It lived alongside the much larger Segnosaurus, which was the second most massive Therizinosaur behind the famous Therizinosaurus itself. It was also one of the first of these dinosaurs to be scientifically described in the late 1970s, with its confusing anatomical features rendering it something of a taxonomic mystery. The genus measured up to 7 metres or 23 feet long, with recent studies putting its weight at around 4 metric tonnes. Standing about 11 feet tall, Stegnosaurus would have been a high-browsing herbivore, 
with its derived teeth and downturned jaws, enabling it to feed on tough vegetation than its smaller neighbour, Elicosaurus. Interestingly, yet more Therizinosaur genera were present in the Boyan Shire formation, including the fragmentary Enigmasaurus and the recently described Duonychus. The latter was a small member of the group, at around 10 feet long and 570 pounds in mass, being similar to Elicosaurus in size. However, this bizarre animal can be distinguished by its two-fingered forelimbs, which is currently the only known example of this within Therizinosauridae. This was almost certainly an adaptation for pulling down vegetation to within reach of the dinosaur's mouth. These diverse herbivores may have also utilised their large curved claws as a form of defence when faced with the large contemporary dromaeosaur Achillobator and the tyrannosauroid Kulu. While Therizinosaurs clearly thrived in late Cretaceous Asia, their remains are far rarer in North America, although they were clearly present on that continent, with by far the best known being the genus Nothronychus. This close relative of Sagnosaurus and Erlikosaurus was native to what is now New Mexico and Utah during the Turonian stage between 93 and 89 million years ago. Represented by two species, N. McKinleyi and N. Grafmanii, this was a medium-sized Therizinosaur, being up to 17 feet long and weighing between 1,800 and 2,600 pounds. Studies of its inner ear have shown that this genus was attuned to hearing low-frequency sounds, indicating that Nothronychus vocalizations were almost certainly deep and may have reached into the infrasound range. While other North American Therizinosaur fossils from this time are lacking, their highly distinctive footprints have been uncovered in the Campanian Age Lower Cantwell Formation of Denali, Alaska, showing that these animals survived on the continent until roughly 70 million years ago. However, by far the largest and most famous member of this oddball family was the genus Therizinosaurus itself. Once thought to have been a giant turtle, this was an enormous theropod that could reach 10 meters or 33 feet long and weights of over 5 metric tons. Endemic to the Maastrichtian age Nemegd formation of Mongolia, Therizinosaurus is unfortunately known from pretty scrappy remains, consisting of partial forelimbs, claws, and hind limb elements. Like other members of the group, it would have been a slow moving high browser, able to reach foliage at least 5 meters or over 16 feet above the ground. It lived in a relatively cool semi arid ecosystem that consisted of riverside forests dominated by Araucaria conifers but was home to a variety of other plants including ginkgos, plane trees, reed grasses and duckweed. Given its great height, Therizinosaurus may have inhabited a somewhat giraffe-like niche, browsing on vegetation unreachable by other herbivores aside from sauropods. The infamous claws of this genus could be over one meter long, and were proportionally straighter and narrower than those of other Therizinosaurids, being hooked only towards the tips. Despite pop culture depictions of these claws being used as impaling weapons, recent studies have found that they would have been far too fragile to have been used in this manner. It's far more likely that Therizinosaurus used its massive claws for display purposes, and possibly as a deterrent to predators such as the contemporary Tyrannosaurid Tarbosaurus. Therizinosaurs persisted until the very end of the Cretaceous period, with the genus Nanxiungosaurus dwelling in southern China until just before the KPG extinction event. During the Cenozoic, the slow-moving browser niche pioneered by these theropods would be taken up by various mammals such as calicotheres, ground sloths, gorillas and giant pandas, with Therizinosaurs proving that in evolutionary terms it's often good to be weird. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the even stranger contemporary of Therizinosaurus the giant Godzilla duck mimic Dinochirus. See you again soon. Cheerio.